In today's video, I'm going to teach you how easy it is to use Copilot on your iPad. If you're new here, my name is Aldo and I do work at Microsoft, but I also love making videos so people use their computers better. One thing I want to talk about though before we get into how to use Copilot is what version of Copilot we're using today. In today's video, we are using the free consumer version of Copilot, not the business editions. That being said, let's get into this. To get started, we are going to launch into the Apple App Store. And then we're going to hit the search option and type in the word Copilot. Of course, if you know how to do some of these steps, feel free to jump ahead to the um, timestamps below. I'm going to select on Copilot here and then choose to go download. It is a free download. All you need is a Microsoft account, which is also free to make the most of this app. Now that it's downloaded, you can simply select on open. But what I'm going to do is go over to my recently added apps, press and hold on Copilot and then I'm going to add it to my home screen. Now that it's on my home screen, I'm going to press and hold one more time and I'm going to drag it down the bottom so it lives in the dock. So it's really easy for me to quickly access. Now I'm going to open up Copilot. It's going to ask if it wants, if I want notifications. I don't like notifications, so I'm going to go don't allow. I am going to let it use my uh, location while I'm using the app. And then I'm going to ask it not to track my activities across websites, but you guys choose what settings work for you. You can see here that we are already inside of Copilot and you don't even have to sign in to get started, but I recommend that you do. To sign in, you want to press on the top right hand corner where it says sign in. Then it's going to ask you to either sign in with an Apple, Microsoft, Google account, or if you've already signed in before, it's going to ask you to continue. Sign in with whatever login you use. Once you've signed in, Copilot greets you with a hi Aldo, what's new? Uh, one thing I want to show you with the iPad is, of course, you do, you can use it in landscape or portrait orientation. Um, depending on what I'm doing, I actually like to jump between either or of them. And I want to give you a quick rundown of the application. In the top left hand corner, you have three lines, a bit of a hamburger menu. And this shows you all of your previous conversations with Copilot. On the top right hand corner, you have a little uh, pen on paper, and that is to start a new conversation with Copilot. I'm gonna drop rid of the uh, keyboard away. You can see down the bottom here, you have a range of prompts that uh, it gives you to suggest how you can start a new conversation. And then of course, you have the Copilot button, that if you press on that, it takes you actually to the home screen. I love the home screen because it gives you a lot of information. It starts off with, of course, your weather. And of course, there's a great Copilot Daily. The Copilot Daily is um, a quick AI generated news feed. Copilot Daily, it's Sunday, May 25th. Here's a quick tip using a dishwasher. Can you... you can jump between the different tips here by, or you can jump between the different news reports by using the back and the forward button. And it also shows you the sources that it is getting this information from. You can personalize this in the top right hand corner and tell it what topics you're interested in or not interested in. So maybe you want a bit more of technology and finance. Uh, you'll get more if you add this, but I'm going to know later for now. And then to get out of this, I'm just going to select on the X. And as we scroll through, you can see here we get some news from a few different resources. If we open up this one, for example, and it's just a really nice, easy viewing experience. If you want to share this article with someone, you can select on the ellipses and hit the share button. Or if you want to get out of it, hit the X button and keep scrolling through. Um, of course, you get some topics Copilot would recommend, things you enjoy. And you have I some ideas as well. So these are just things to keep you, I guess, up to date, as well as some ideas that you probably wouldn't usually search for. I'm going to select X to get out of that and continue showing the navigation. Down the bottom here, you can choose to either have a quick response or a think deeper response. Quick response is fantastic if you want a very fast reply. If you have more complex problems, I would recommend choosing the think deeper. What this does is it asks it to add a lot more reasoning behind the answer. Um, and this is where you'd ask a lot more complex questions. I've asked it to give me the pros and cons of think deeper versus a quick response. And I've said give it to me in a table summary you see here it's thinking and it's got those squiggly lines this is in the think deeper mode and what you'll see here is a much more thought out and analyzed version of that response so you can see it's given you a lot of detail here if i want to copy this question just to give you a comparison i'm going to press and hold and select on copy then i'm going to move and i'm going to go quick response i'm going to 
paste that same question in and we can actually see the difference of a quick response. So you see quick response here still gives you a lot of detail, but if we scroll up and actually look at the Think Deeper, the Think Deeper gives you a lot more information in its answer. I wanna show you how you can actually work with these answers here. So if you press and hold on a response from Copilot, it takes a second, then you get all these context menus on the right hand side. If you wanted to copy the entire answer, you could simply select on copy and then maybe paste it somewhere else in Copilot or somewhere else. Uh, but I'm gonna get rid of that for a second because if you press and hold again on that answer, we can do some very cool things. You can choose to select some of the text, which allows you to just quickly go through and highlight a bit of information that you're after instead of the whole answer. A very cool thing you can also do is press and hold, and then you can choose to actually edit this response. And this opens it up as a different page where you can go ahead and you can edit the answer within Copilot. It takes a couple of seconds, but what you can see here is that this is the response from Copilot and you can actually go ahead and edit it in line. So if we tap here, we can actually go ahead and type things in, um, but you can also go ahead and if we select somewhere else, for example, I'm gonna ask Copilot. You can ask Copilot a question um, so you can get even more information within the answer. I've just asked as Copilot use ChatGPT. And then it gives you an answer here that we could go ahead and we could continue editing that response, but I could copy that answer. And then maybe here as a section, I'm just gonna add it down here, enter, enter and then I'm going to paste that in. So I'm editing this as we go. You can see you have a range of editing tools at the bottom where you can create bullet points. You could, of course, add some formatting to it as well. Headers and, of course, bold and italicize. Uh, so you can go ahead and you can keep working within this Copilot answer, and this turns it into a page. If you select on the ellipses on the right-hand side, you can, of course, choose to either delete or rename that page. The name is Microsoft Copilot Think Deeper Verse Response. But if you wanna actually see where this lives, we're gonna go back. Of course, it's gonna show you here because it's part of that thread. But if you wanna access this later, you can see you have your conversations here, but there is also now the page that you have created that not only has the response from Copilot, but it also has the bits and pieces that you've edited in here as well. Another way of working, uh, let's jump back into this, Another way of working with these answers and the responses, if you don't want to turn it into a page, is let's press and hold on it one more time. You can, of course, give the feedback of good or bad. You can choose to share that answer with someone, but there's also the option of read aloud. So maybe you don't want to have to read through everything, but you want Copilot to read it to you. We select on read aloud. There's a clear trade-off between prioritizing a think deep approach versus opting for a quick response. And you can see it really tries to personify and add emotion and tonality and not just be a robotic voice. And down the bottom, you can choose to jump back and forth by 10 seconds. And then you can just go X if you wanna get out of that. To the right of that, you have the plus button where you can upload a file or a photo uh, and you can ask Copilot to do things um, to analyze that photo or analyze that file. I'm just gonna press on the plus button, go upload a photo. It's gonna take me to my camera, but I'm gonna select on the photos option to take me to my gallery. Now I'm just gonna scroll through. I'm gonna upload a photo of my coffee grinder and then I'm just gonna go next. And I'm gonna ask for a quick response first. Tell me about this grinder. As a quick response here, it gives me a bit of information about it. It's got a digital display, it's got programmable buttons, um, and it's a stainless steel design. But maybe you're looking at buying this and you wanna be have a lot more information. I'm gonna say, think deeper, be more specific, and watch this. So obviously, um, thinking deeper, it's gonna analyze that photo in a lot more detail. Um, and it's already called it a Breville coffee grinder in the description. So it knows by the photo that it is a Breville grinder. Um, and then as it is going through, it has actually uh, understood this is the Breville Smart Grinder Pro, which is correct. It tells you about the precision of it and the grind settings. Um, it tells you 
the consistency, the details around uh, the user features and the digital display. And the fact that it was able to identify the grinder correctly shows you the difference of using just the quick response versus the think deeper option. Um, but this is great if you want to ask Copilot uh, about any sort of image that you're putting in and need information about. Now let's head back to a new conversation. We're going to press that plus button one more time. This time we're going to upload a file. And then I'm just going to have my recent documents here. I'm just going to select on a Word document, um, Microsoft Copilot Pro versus Consumer. And it's going to upload this file into Copilot for me. And then you could ask it a lot more information. Again, you could either use a quick or a think deeper response. I'm going to ask it to provide an outline uh, and the dot points of this document. So I've popped it in and it has analyzed that document really quickly. And it's given a very fast overview, the benefits and the challenges that were all outlined within this document, super quick. And of course, you can go ahead and refine that if you wanted to, you could ask it to generate to think deeper or a longer or a shorter response by using these icons down the bottom. So the pen is the ability to add it into a page and edit. Then the recycle option or the circular icon, you can ask it to think deeper about that question, provide a longer or a shorter response, and it will just see, uh, make it more succinct or it will elaborate with that response as it refines it. And of course, the last thing I want to show you for today is how you can use the voice option to talk naturally with Copilot. Hey, Aldo. I'm going to mute myself for a second. The first thing I want to show you is you can actually select on the settings cog and you can choose all these different voices for Copilot. I can't wait to learn more. Looking for answers or I can write story. I want to hear your I'm going to leave it on Elm for now. Uh, you can, of course, mute and unmute here, but you can have natural conversations with Copilot. Hey, Copilot, what are some of the advantages of using voice instead of typing in to an AI bot like yourself? Voice is quicker, more natural and convenient, especially when multitasking or on the go. What are some of the drawbacks to it? Some drawbacks include background noise interference, less privacy in public spaces, and potential difficulty understanding access. And do you create a, so what, I'm going to pause it for here for now. Um, but what you guys can see is, I've muted myself again, but you can talk and you can interrupt and you can have a conversation with Copilot. And then when you're done, if you select on the X option, you get a transcript as well. So if we get out of here, you actually get a transcript of what you guys had spoken about. Um, obviously, it is not 100% perfect, but even still, you can see it is a really great way of interacting with Copilot. And I've been using voice more and more uh, as I use the Copilot app. And there you have it. Those are some of the ways that you can use Microsoft Copilot on your iPad. Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. If you want to supercharge your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.